All right, everybody, unscheduled video, but um, there was an outage yesterday, and it gave us an example that I wanted to ensure that we talk about. Um, so yesterday, there was a problem with the RPM Fusion um, repositories, and you might have seen this on Reddit or something where your checksum doesn't match. And someone posted it on Reddit. It's a repository repository problem, not Fedora or your machine. Glorious Egg Girl just posted a notice for Nabarro users. Just reinstalling for my wife and having the same issue. It seems to be RPM Fusion. Here we go. More posts, more posts. All of these users running into an issue with the Fedora RPM Fusion repository. Now, if you've been watching my videos, I've been talking about removing complexity from the clients and moving that to a server CI system because we also had an outage because we depend on the RPM Fusion repositories to give us the NVIDIA drivers so we can make those awesome slipstreamed images with the drivers on them, right? And we did have a failure. This failed, sorry about the kid, uh, this failed last night. So in the build step here, the um, uh, we had the same problem that you would have on your local machine. The repository was down and it failed. Uh, usually build jobs will try uh, a few times. And last night we definitely, I was like, huh, I wonder if that's an intermittent thing. And we, you know, clicked the button and tried to make, um, you know, new builds and things like that, but the infrastructure was down. Now, failure is going to happen, right? So what we typically try to do is do with, in cloud what they call limiting the blast radius, right? Which is why there's no one big cluster at work, right? It's usually a bunch of separate clusters that have separate tasks so that when you're doing an upgrade, you know, on one, like your entire, your entire world doesn't fall apart, right? However, in traditional Linuxes, when you're doing all of this configuration and stuff on the client, that means when there's an outage, all of the clients see that, right? So here's how our existing model, the, what I call the cloud native model, mitigated this. That night, no new NVIDIA image was made um, until later on when, uh, you know, we were able to you know, retry and, and it succeeded that time. So the difference with between this model is if you were subscribed to an NVIDIA image from us, you never got a new image. You, you didn't know, or you wouldn't notice that RPM fusion was broken. Um, because you're not, you're not, um, you don't have your client trying to reach RPM fusion at all. What we're doing is we're building the image in GitHub and then if that succeeds, we send it to you. And if it doesn't, the build fails. So you would have not noticed anything. Uh, the only reason we noticed is because uh, it failed in GitHub and you know all the notifications and stuff fired off. Now, this does will lead to another question. Well, what about if GitHub has an outage, right? Or if the thing, you know, isn't this just an, a single point of failure, for example? However, I don't know. Like I would say, I would I would make the argument that um, if you're running off an image-based system and the thing that you're subscribed to, in this case, that registry goes down, um, ideally it should be invisible to you and it wouldn't lead to an error, right? Like it, like it does right now. Um, I'm reasonably certain that if, if you were using one of our images, like we are, you would, you probably wouldn't notice, um, you know, unless you were trying to do something like say layer an RPM fusion package, and then, you know, then you would get the error. Um, I like to, in our images, what we do is um, if we need third-party repositories, we install them in the beginning of the container build process. We install the stuff we need, and then we actually remove those third-party repos from the final image so that that's one less thing that you're trying to HTTP to to get metadata and all that stuff. Ideally, you're just getting everything from that registry. Um, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, outages... I mean, it's going to happen to anybody, right? It, it, it could happen to us at any time. Um, but I just thought it was really interesting because this is an example of a case where doing builds in CI could give you that layer of protection um, that we're looking for in order to make an operating system that is more end user consumable, right? Like Chromebooks don't get RPM fusion errors, right? If there's an error in the build system for how they make that thing, I never see it, right? Um, so that's kind of the model, you know, that I've been talking about and that trying to get get to is do all that complexity, right? We need to do all this. Stuff. We need RPM fusion. We need those binaries and all of that stuff, but to move that off of the client and into the server, you know, additionally, I just to give you a quick update. Um, we are now publishing multiple images here 
of NVIDIA. So we've added uh, the KDE spin, Kenoite, yeah? Maybe I'm getting good at that. And I'm um, planning on adding, well, now that the uh, now that the build is green and everything is working, um, you know, we plan on adding more NVIDIA builds. We can definitely make a Mate one, an Alex Cute one, and a Voxite one. Like it's just adding extra parameters to uh, to the build scripts, and then we'll have packages for those. So if you go to the org and just click packages, this is what we're building so far. A lot of these are uh, vanilla; they don't, they won't have NVIDIA. And then we're going to start tacking a dash NVIDIA at the end for builds that have uh, NVIDIA drivers slipped streamed in and then uh, see how those work out. I've got one running on my NVIDIA machine now and everything seems to be great. I think it's also great that signing and stuff is taken care of. Um, I've had named DGPU for a while, so I've, I didn't, I had forgotten all the stuff that NVIDIA people have to do. So having someone do that for me and everything is like uh, really amazing. So we have those builds up and running. Um, people are starting to do pull requests. If, if you are among them, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. There's a, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, right? We still need to do testing and we'd like to have like a nice little grid of images and, you know, doing, you know, a nice website where you can like see stuff and have all that. Um, so some of you are starting to pull request uh, things that uh, might be useful. So if you're doing that, thank you. Uh, or if not, you could just join us in the discussions. And even if it's like, hey, I tried this thing and it works, big deal. That's uh that's feedback. Um, the more uh, stress and effort we put into this, the the more reliable it'll be at the end. I don't think, you know, I, I want to temper your expectations. There is no uh, end state, right? There's not going to be a video that I do that's like, congratulations. We have fixed the Linux reliability on the D Linux desktop. Let's go find something else to do. Um, it's always going to be removing the things that are sucking the most, right? And giving ourselves um, a better chance to make that saving throw, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like some, sometimes computers just break, right? Um, but we can try to continue to push that model forward that removes as much of the complexity uh, off those clients and into server. Uh, I've said that a bunch of times, but um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really happy with how things are going. Things are... Uh, uh, things are getting faster. Uh, I'm finding myself working on this a lot. And uh, a lot of you are giving me the energy to do that. So if you're digging this, if you're digging the way the Linux desktop is going, uh, leave a comment below and uh, stay safe out there, everyone. Cheers.